Hey kiddos, so this is lesson three, construction techniques one, perpendicular bisectors. All right, let's go ahead and get going here. All right, so the lesson basically uh, is focused on perpendicular bisectors. Your learning goal is let's explore equal distances. Interesting. So here are, here is the warm up. Uh, Three point one. Find all the points. Here are two points labeled A and B, and a line segment CD. So they have a set of instructions for us. For number one, it says mark five points that are a distance CD away from point A. How could you describe all points that are a distance CD away from point A? Right, so let's go ahead and look at our pretty image. And let's think how we can make five points that have the distance of CD. And the CD is the segment, the line segment right here. Yeah, but it has to be distance CD away from point A. So point A is the issue here. Now, we do know which object or which tool can you use to make sure that you have five points that are a distance of CD away from A. Should have a circle, yeah? So if you want, you can center the circle on point C. And then you can make the circle with the radius of CD. You can drag that circle over to point A, couldn't you? And let's see if it allows me to zoom out. It doesn't. Okay. So let's see, what's pan? Nope, pan doesn't let me zoom out either. It's all right. So my five points are gonna to have to be drawn. There's one of my points right here. Here's another one of my points right here. And you could draw this anywhere on your circle, really. It doesn't have to be exactly where I'm drawing my five points. And you know what? For giggles, I'll draw my other circle right here, or my other point. So all five of those points, okay, are basically the same distance. How could you describe all the points that are a distance of CD away from point A? So describe, describe to me, answer the question below. How can you describe all the points that we just made using a circle with a radius of CD? So describe all the points. Okay, so that's you down there. All right, number two, mark five points with well, a distance CD from point B. So this time it's point B. And again, describe all the points, but this time it's in reference to point B. So go ahead, do the same situation with point B. All right, let's get your circle. I recommend using CD for your radius. and then center that circle on point B, yeah? And then create your five points, all right? So you're gonna make your five points and you'll do that up here. Use the draw tool, probably the best. Okay, I'll make a couple points. I'll make one right here. I'll make a point here, another point here. 
I'll make a point here, another point here. So those are my five points, okay? Now, in a different color, so this is step three, mark all the points that are a distance CD away from both A and B at the same time. So in a different color, mark all the points that are a distance CD away from both A and B. All right, and it's, and you could see it. All right, if you did the circles correctly, you can see those two points. I, I would probably use red, blue, green, uh, but I would mark those two points. So go ahead and pause the video and try to see if you could find those points along those circles that are at the same distance of A and B. Okay, so hopefully you pause the video and you marked your points that you think are the same distance from point A and point B. Hopefully you realized the point of intersection. Right, the two points of intersection have the same distance from A to B. And you can see that even better when you do the line segment from A to that line or that point of intersection. And you can see how those line segments, those two line segments are the same distance. And you can see the same thing here with, uh, let's use a different color. Let's use blue. I don't want to click start over because I'm afraid it'll get rid of everything. But do you notice how those two, the red, the two, the pair of red line segments are the same length? Do you notice how the blue line segments? Are roughly the same like that. I wasn't exact right there. Okay, so that kind of justifies my markings for number three. All right, let's move on. All right, so your teacher will mark points A and B on the floor. Apparently, we have to do it here, yeah? Because thank you, COVID, for making our lives so much more difficult. Let's start over. Let's make sure these points are... There we go. That's not even a point. That looks like an arrow. All right, there's my two points. And mark them A and B on the floor. I've never used the text option before. Let's see what that looks like. Oh, that looks actually pretty nice. And now I just realized, I think the select tool makes a point. I'm not sure. And point B, yeah. That is the tool that I just used. Very nice. Decide where to stand so you are the same distance from A as you are from B. So go ahead and try to create a point somewhere in between point A and point B. And then think of another place, right, that you can stand if somebody already took that spot. So I'll tell you what, go ahead and pause it and try to see where you would be to be the, in the middle of A and B. All right. Um, all right. So if you paused it and you tried, you should probably have picked a point somewhere in between, right? And if somebody already picked that spot, where would you be then? Uh, okay, so hopefully you paused it and you picked a new point for that situation. And you could have probably just picked like next to them, you know, 
if you wanted. Uh, after everyone sits down, draw a diagram of what happened. Oh, we, we did that. So, good. All right. So, we do have the circle option and to kind of justify why we did what we did. So, if we had, oh, that's not, that's, all right, so circle A. So from A to B, there's that situation. From B to A, right? We have our two points of intersection. One point is right here. The other point is right here. And it looks like I chose a little to the left, right, of the center. But do you notice how that would be a perpendicular bisector? So you can use perpendicular bisectors to Come on. There we go. I'm just labeling the points real quick. So do you guys notice how you can use a perpendicular bisector to find the middle, all right, of two points? So I wasn't too far off. Now, why did I choose the one point below? because the first point in the middle was already taken. Now, why did I choose that? Because I knew that if I couldn't be in the middle, at least I could be equidistant between the two points instead. OK? That would be an isosceles triangle. So, looks like I'm getting a little too fancy here. What happens if I click the backspace? Nothing. Okay. But if you guys remember, isosceles triangle has two sides that are the same length. So, that would be one of the byproducts of a perpendicular bisector. All right, so are you ready for more? Let's see. In this activity, we thought the set of points on the floor, a two-dimensional plane, like a flat surface, kind of like a computer screen, yeah? Uh, that were equidistant from the two given points, AB. Ah, so this point right here, let me go ahead and label it. I believe I'll call it E. Point E right there is equidistant from A and B. That means it's equal distance from point A and point B. Trade routes. Point E would be an excellent trade route. Okay, because all the farmers, all the artisans, anybody making anything to sell would definitely agree to point E for a location. All right, let's see. What would happen if we didn't confine ourselves to the floor? Start with two points A, B in a three-dimensional space. What would the set of points equidistance from A to B look like? Ah, so E is equidistant, but that one center point that we had originally, we'll call it F, that was the original equidistant location. E, on the other hand, is the three-dimensional equidistant point, right? You couldn't be on the floor right here, so you moved up or down, okay? And I think that's what they're getting at. So try to explain that at the very beginning. What would happen 
if we didn't confine ourselves to the floor? And then the other part of the question, what would the set of points equidistant from point A to B look like? Look at the image that we created. What, what do you see? What objects do you see? Okay. And here's a tool if you just want to go over it again. You don't have to. You could always use the picture or the construction that we had earlier. All right, activity 3.3, how well can you slice it? Let's find out. So go ahead and create a perpendicular bisector, just like the last example that we did, OK? But this time, it's going to be from the segment P to Q. So you're going to try to find the middle point that is equidistant from both P and Q. So go ahead and pause the video and try to create your perpendicular bisector. Hint, you will have to use the circles. All right, so hopefully you paused the video and you tried. You have one circle here with the length, with the radius of the length of P to Q. And now, we have another circle this time centered on Q with, again, the same length of P to Q with the radius. I would really like to know how to zoom out. All right, so use the tools available to find the perpendicular bisector of the segment P to Q. Oh, it looks like I have to drag. OK, no worries. I could do that. So from here, and it won't let me go further down. I'm just going to kind of fake it here. Hold on. I'm going to have to pan again, go down a bit. I'm going to try to line up this line as best as I can. All right, so notice how I kind of had to create two line segments to just because I got confined to this image. If you end up finding out how I can zoom out, that would be helpful because I can only zoom out the screen itself. All right, so that is a perpendicular bisector. All right, X marks the spot. And remember, perpendicular bisectors do several things for you. So P, Q, R. R is the middle, yeah, between P and Q. It's the midpoint which happens to be equidistant from both P and Q. All right, after coming up with a method, make a copy of a segment PQ on tracing paper and look for another method to find its perpendicular bisector. Interesting. Could you, uh, if it was on tracing paper, right? In eighth grade, uh, I know a lot of kids use tracing paper. You can draw the line segment. And what can you do with tracing paper that you can't quite do with a computer screen? Right? Fold it. <laughs> what happens if you fold it? Where does that crease? So explain to me where the crease is on the paper, the tracing paper, if you were to fold the line segment P and Q on that tracing paper, where would the crease be? And basically just answer it right here. All right, so in summary, a perpendicular bisector is a segment is a is of a segment is a line through a midpoint of a segment that is perpendicular to it. So for example, point C to point D down here is a perpendicular bisector of AB.
okay? And a conjecture, so a conjecture is a guess that hasn't been proven yet. An educated guess, one that you can kind of surmise because of something given, right? And one conjecture I have is where these two line segments intersect, because it's perpendicular, it's a perpendicular bisector, the point where they intersect where my uh, mouse is, that's actually the midpoint of AB, okay? All right, so make sure you understand these two ideas, all right, definitions, perpendicular bisector, you should be able to identify that, and conjecture. All right, which is a guess that hasn't been proven yet. All right, so practice problems. Uh, the diagram is a straight edge and a compass construction. A is the center of one cir circle, and B is the center of the other. Select all the true statements. Ooh, and there are several, aren't there? So the line set, the line CD is perpendicular to AB. The point M is the midpoint of segment AB. The length of AB is equal to the length of CD. Segment AM is perpendicular to segment BM. Ooh, here's an interesting one. CB plus BD. So CB is from here to here, right? If there was a line segment there. Plus BD, which is from here to here, is greater than CD, which is the perpendicular bisector itself. Ooh, that's a good one. I like that one. All right, so go ahead and remember, select all. There might be more than one answer. All right, so problem two. In the diagram, line CD is the perpendicular bisector of line segment AB. So CD from here to here, that's the perpendicular bisector of line AB. Yep, yep, okay. We just don't have the circles, yeah? Uh, assume the conjecture that the set of points equidistant from A and B is a perpendicular bisector of segment AB is true. Is point E closer to point A, closer to point B, or the same distance between the two points? Ooh, explain how you know. That's an excellent question. Okay. You know, of course, you can use the draw tool. If you click on the draw tool, you can recreate this using the circles and the compass, okay? Starting with the two marked points, A, B. So here's point A, point B. Precisely describe the straight edge and compass moves required to construct the triangle A, B, C in this diagram. So step one. How did you, what was the first thing you had to, to create uh, and center on point A and point, point B, right? Step two, how did you get uh, point C and the point down below, which I'm assuming is point D? How did you get those, right? And then... <sighs> It's the instructions to create the triangle, right? So step three, what tools did you create? Uh, or which tool did you use to create those uh, sides of triangle AB? Okay. You can always use the draw tool down below if you click on it. And you could recreate the image up here to help organize your steps you might have more than one step okay depending on how you do it so just be aware of that all right problem four we have starting with points with c and d and only using a straight edge and compass to construct all the rest all steps of the construction are visible select all the steps needed to produce this diagram Ooh, all the steps so you might have more than one you can go ahead and use the draw tool to recreate this image and then make sure you write down the steps and then see all the steps you needed to use. Okay, there are some in here that are just shenanigans. It doesn't 
exists in your process. All right, problem five. It's a whole bunch of select all true statements. I highly recommend that you use the draw tool to recreate this and then see just which ones are true. I highly recommend thinking about circles and the idea of the radius of these circles. Are these two circles the same? Point uh, circle A, circle C, are they are they the same size? Right? So that would probably help out with selecting the correct options. And remember, part uh, question or option C is basically just saying AD is two times the length of AC. That's how I read it. Okay, so AD is twice the length of AC. All right, that is the end of the lesson. You are all wonderful. Have a lovely day.